the best AI content writer. Hello friends, today I wanted to share with you an interesting research that I stumbled upon and also a content writing process that is related to this research, which was published by a group of researchers from the Stanford University. It creates amazing content. Uh, to be honest, I, I haven't seen so well-crafted content generated by AI. It is somewhat similar to perplexity, but seems to be way better. And it also utilizes something that looks kind of looks like agents. So it's very innovative in the process and it is producing great output. Let me show you first the research. So this is the research. I will share it obviously in the video description. Um, they share interesting insights regarding how to create good content. And we are talking specifically about Wikipedia style content. So well researched with references and, you know, really academic style, not fluff and not like marketing hype. So this is very interesting to read, but I won't go over everything. I will just show you the process, which basically they gather the topics. Then the LLM creates a few entities, a few different perspectives that are relevant to the topics that you ask for. So let's say you want a topic to be about nutrition and bodybuilding. So it's going to gather, it's going to generate agents or perspectives from a bodybuilder, a nutritionist, a fitness expert, etc. Then the Wikipedia writer, which is in charge of writing the article, is going to go back and forth with, with each of these experts. And afterwards, it's going to uh, fetch sources and inject the sources into the outline. It's going to generate the outline and then draft the content. It's a pretty, um, I wouldn't say complex, but it's a, it's a long process. And also the generation of the article takes approximately one minute. They claim it, that it can take up to three minutes. Based on my experience, it was uh, way faster. But this is like a, a it's, it's kind of similar to the chain of thought process, which is like many iterations, many optimization until they get it right. But it's very interesting to see how they are using different perspectives in order to gain insights from different experts related to the topic. I will show you in a moment a few examples that I've generated. But in general, um, over here, they, they share different results. So evaluations that were done uh, using different benchmarks and also evaluations that were done using um, feedback from Wikipedia editors. So they gave them two types of, of, uh, of contents. So let's say the say with the same about the same topic but with one was created with the storm process which is the process that they have invented and one with a different process and they asked the wikipedia editors to score based on different parameters so interest level organization relevance coverage and verifiability and the scores in this process which is called the storm were way better there are a few more nuances uh, to the process, but I don't want to make this video too technical. I just want to show you an, a few examples. So I've created a few examples. This is the first example is the importance of food density in diet for bodybuilders. And obviously you can e very easily show the whole thing in a PDF. So as soon as you um, generate, I will, I will show you in a moment how to generate uh, the, the article eventually you're going to get this table of contents. It contains the summary, the lead section, nutritional science, food density explained, role of food density in bodybuilding, strategies for incorporating food density, case studies and research. And it looks like this very well researched and everything has references in it. So you can see this is the eighth reference. You can just click this and see exactly what what is the origin of the reference, highlights, what is the URL, etc. 
more references, so very well researched. And the interesting thing, thing here is that you can see the brainstorming process. So these are the experts that it shows. So sports dietitian, professional bodybuilder, nutrition scientist, and basic fact writer. So the writer, the Wikipedia writer, first is asking the sports dietitian, how does food density specifically affect muscle recovery and growth for bodybuilders? Then it got the answer. Then it asked it to elaborate. Can you elaborate on how food density impacts the energy levels and workout performance of bodybuilders? And then it asked it another question. What are some practical tips for bodybuilders to incorporate nutrient-dense foods into their daily meal planning? Then it asked a professional bodybuilder questions related to the topic, which is food density and the impact of food density on bodybuilders. So how do you define food density and why it is particularly important for bodybuilders in terms of their nutritional needs? And then a few more questions, etc., etc. And afterwards, it generated the article. Now let me show you another article that I generated. Dollar cost averaging versus lump sum investments in stocks so basically dollar cost averaging is when you push the same amount of money in the same frequency so let's say you decide you want to invest in the s p every six months a thousand bucks so it's just investing a thousand bucks every six months into the s p versus lump sum is when you have an amount of money instead of pushing it in the same intervals like dollar cost averaging you can just push the whole amount of money into the stock market and it has pros and cons and um, these are basically better explanations so dollar cost averaging is an investment strategy where an individual invests a fixed amount of money into a particular asset at regular intervals regardless of the asset's price this approach helps to reduce the impact of market volatility and minimizes the risk of making poor investment decisions based on short-term pricing uh, fluctuations. It explains the mechanism of dollar cost averaging, the advantages of dollar cost averaging, and the limitations. And then it discusses lump sum investments. So it's a strategy where an investor allocates a significant amount of money into an investment all at once rather than spreading the investment over time through methods like dollar cost averaging. This approach can be particular, particularly advantage, uh, advantageous when the investor has a sub substantial amount of capital available from sources such as windfall inheritance or sale of an asset such as a house, or etc. And then a comparison, so dollar cost averaging and lump sum investment are two prevalent strategies for investing in stock market. Now, historical, historical performance, so research has indicated that uh, lump sum tends to outperform dollar cost averaging in many circumstances, circumstances, with findings suggesting that LSI is superior about two-thirds of the time in established markets such as the United States, UK, and Australia. However, this study extends the traditional analysis by examining not only average historical outcomes, but also the distribution of results under varying market conditions, uh, also in volatile markets and bear markets. So here, risk factors and considerations, case studies, etc. Now, the next um, article that I wanted it to write is best methods to learn coding, and they share like different methods, different online platforms. self-directed learning, how to do it, practical application, hybrid learning approaches, etc. And the last um, article that I generated, and this is the last one I share with you before we generate something live, just so you'll see the process. So the most important psychological experiments in the last hundred years. So not surprisingly, they mentioned the Milgram experiment then the Bobo doll experiment, then the Stanford prison experiment, then Robert's cave experiment, which I didn't know about, or at least I didn't know it based on this name. 
little Albert experiment and then it shares ethical considerations uh, and a few more things now let's give an example live so commonalities between stoic philosophy philosophy and buddhism and then it's asking me please type here the, to elaborate on the purpose of writing this article this is supposed to be an educational and fun article targeting high school students and now the process is going to begin as you can see it may take up to three minutes it starts by identifying different perspectives for researching the topic and this is exactly it's it's, it's not exactly but it reminds me of the auto bid function by the autogen team which basically you tell it what the task you would like to accomplish and then the auto build um, function is generate generates the relevant agents and sub agents for the task now it is browsing the internet looking for resources related as you can see here many resources so daily stoic and medium articles bbc psychology today Stoic Grind, Wikipedia, etc. Now it's generating, it's still generating the article. As you can see, it's just browsing these articles. I'm very, very curious to see what it's going to uh, eventually write. I'm a big fan or follower of Stoic philosophy, and I have many friends of mine who kind of feel more connection to Buddhism and I believe that most philosophies are pretty much similar it's only slight nuances anyway it is writing and drafting our article and we will see it in a moment let's see the brainstorming process so it shows let's see, I'm not sure if it finished yet let, let's let, let's let it finish and then we will be able to see exactly which entities or experts it chose. Okay, so editor free. The editor will explore the psychological aspects of Stoicism and Buddhism in relation to modern therapeutic practices like mindfulness and CBT. They will discuss the practical application of both philosophies in promoting mental well-being. Okay, so the question he asked, so how do Stoicism and Buddhism each address this concept of suffering and what strategies do they propose for managing it? Then the next question was, how are principles of Stoicism and Buddhism incorporated into modern therapeutic practices like mindfulness and CBT? What specific techniques derived from Stoicism and, and Buddhism are commonly used in therapeutic settings to help clients manage their thoughts and emotions? So this was the third editor. Let's see editor one, what it was asked. So this is a stoic philosopher. And basically the, the writer is asking the stoic philosopher yes, questions to gain his perspective about the topic of the article. So what are central concepts of emotional resilience in stoic philosophy and how do they compare to similar ideas in Buddhism? What are historical origins of stoic philosophy and Buddhism and how did they cultural context influence their development then we have another editor which is the buddhist scholar um, again asking questions specific to the topic and we have the basic fact writer which is focusing on broadly covering the basic uh, facts about the topic so what are the main tenets of stoic philosophies that align with buddhist teachings how do stoic buddhist practices differ in their practical applications for daily life etc and this is um, the actual pdf so commonalities between stoic philosophy and buddhism this is the table of content core principles so overview of stoicism and buddhism central tenets of 
uh, stoicism, which is control and accept, acceptance, virtue as the highest good and the role of reason, core principles of, of Buddhism or the middle way, the four noble truths and the eightfold path and impermanence and non-attachment and now the interconnections, approach to suffering, emotional resilience, mindfulness and meditations, benefits of meditation, compassion and ethical conduct, similarities and differences, influence and receptions, critics and debate. As you can see, this is like pretty long with the list of all references down below. Let's see what it wrote at the end. I would like to see like the summary, like it's, I find it interesting on a personal level. So if you had enough, uh, just make sure to subscribe <laughs> if you're still interested. Um, let's read this together. I think it will be easier from here. So similarities. Both Stoicism and Buddhism serve as practical philosophies designed to help individuals navigate daily life. Focus on virtue and uh, Okay, this is interesting. When addressing pain and emotions, Stoicism and Buddhism diverge significantly. Stoicism encourages individuals to counter negative experiences with rational reflections. For example, Epictetus, which is one of my famous philosophers, suggests reminding oneself that pain belongs to the body, which is external. Conversely, Buddhist Vipassana, mindfulness, practices advice against forming judgments about experiences as such judgments can create additional layers of suffering instead the goal is to realize the distinction between the experience itself and the perception of that experience as thereby reducing suffering without suppression while it is interesting um, I, I, I must admit that i don't feel that it, there is really a huge significance uh, a difference between both approaches but never mind, this is probably for a different uh, channel. Um, yeah, let's start concluding, guys. I hope you enjoyed this uh, short, not so short, video about this research by the Stanford team and the Storm solution, which allows you to create pretty mind-blowing articles, very well researched and very interesting as well. If you enjoyed this video, obviously like and subscribe. If you can share it with one of your friends, uh, I would definitely appreciate it. If you have feedback or advice, please leave them in the comment section. I will make sure to leave the links in the video description below. And until next time, keep on automating.